Hi, my name's Craig from Axminster Tools. Congratulations, you've treated yourself to the, the Axminster AC1400B bandsaw. Stay with me for the next five minutes or so. I'll just run through a few bits and pieces on this machine to get it running perfectly so you get the best out of your, uh, out of your hard earned cash. So, small benchtop bandsaw. We must remember that. It is a small benchtop bandsaw, certainly the smallest one in our range. Um, personally, at home, I do have one of these bandsaws. I use it for, for small bits and pieces, some slight curve cutting, and this runs, to be honest, in conjunction with a much bigger machine for me. As said, it's the smallest machine in our range. Uh, you kind of, you got about two and a half inches, 60, 63 millimeters under the guides there, but that's height under the guides, not necessarily the depth of cut that it wants to achieve regularly. A machine like this, well, small, thin material. Uh, this is a piece of three quarter inch, 19 mil maple. So hardwoods, not a problem. We have thin ply, certainly not a problem. We have the capacity to do some, some bigger cuts, some deeper cuts some kind of two inch softwood material, but please bear in mind, this is a small machine. Um, if you need to cut this sort of stuff regularly or even bigger regularly, you might want to invest in something else later down the line once you've, um, once you've got to grips with this particular bandsaw. So let's just go through a few tips and hints for you to get this machine running perfectly. Now, you'll get the machine, uh, you'll probably have to put the table on, which is a very simple thing, one little bolt underneath. I think it's important that before we go too far, we, we don't put the fence rail on, we don't even put the table insert in at this stage, and we're not looking at the fence for straight cutting just yet. All important is blade and blade tension, the tension and the tracking, along with the guides, are just about everything on the bandsaw. So, first thing, your blade will come mounted on the machine. A quarter inch wide, six TPI. Now on a machine like this, this is a good general purpose blade. We'll do some cuts shortly, it'll cut pretty curvy, and with the fence and the correct tension set up, it'll cut straight really well. As said, I'm very used to huge bandsaws, but this one is a lovely little tool, so we can get this purring, performing beautifully. Tension's all important. So, your machine will come blade on and a, and a relaxed amount of tension, okay? The knob on the top here is a tension knob. What this does, it lifts subtly this top wheel, just draws the wheel up. Bottom wheel is always fixed, stays in position, obviously goes round and round, but there's no tilt on the wheel for tracking, it's fixed in position. What I like to do first is just ensure that the blade is running as close as I can get it in the middle of the wheel, on the top and the bottom, just approximately. You're not going to get the vernier out, it isn't that important. So we're running approximately in the bottom. Can we see the bottom wheel just here? So we're in the middle of the, the black rubber that's on the tyre there. Once I've got that positioned, I'll apply just a little bit of tension. And you just see subtly that wheel coming up and as soon as I feel that go tight I'll let go and just have a little feel here. One thing we don't want to do on a machine of this size or a bandsaw of any description really is over tension because if you think oh, I really need this blade to stay straight and don't wander I'll crank this up as hard as I can. Well, again, this is quite a small bandsaw and you can start to pull and twist the frame and you'll have problems with the blade coming off. So, a little bit of tension, always good to check the tension in this area. Right, now how much tension? Very difficult to, to get across in a video, to be honest, but I always check it over here, and I find if I can touch the body of the machine with light to moderate pressure, it's probably a little bit too loose. So, I'll just give it this a couple of turns. Not very much, these are quite subtle adjustments and that's already applied quite a bit of tension. I can only just really touch the body of the machine. About a centimetre, 10 mil, three eighths of an inch of movement in this blade. Once I get to that stage, very slowly and carefully, I'll rotate the wheel. 
to see whether the blade stays in the middle of the wheel. Top and bottom. They say it doesn't matter if it rides forward just a smidge on the top or the bottom. These in the middle of the wheel are approximates. If it kind of rides forward a fair bit, and I just want to track it back, we've got the ability just to tilt this top wheel. It's a very simple thing. That's the beauty of a, a little bandsaw. I can spin it around and show you. We've got this tracking knob on the back here. This is a lock for it. That unlocks. This knob goes all the way through the machine and just tilts this top wheel backwards and forwards to help that blade track forward or track back. This movement is extremely subtle. Eighth of a turn of the wheel. Kind of 15, 20 degrees a turn at a time. And what I tend to do is replicate the running of the machine. So okay, very careful, obviously my machine is, is not plugged in at this stage. Not that your machine would start with the doors open because we've got this nice safety micro switch here. And there we go. So that's tracking nicely. And we've got just subtle adjustment on the back. Little adjustment, try and replicate the running of the machine. A couple of little tweaks. And when I'm happy that that's in the position, tension's good, tracking's good. I'll hold on to the big tracking knob and the big wing nut at the back. Hold this one, lock this one. Just subtle. It's not a white knuckle job. It won't go anywhere. And that is tension and tracking done on this lovely little machine. There we go. Also, you notice that there's really no sound, no noise coming from the machine now. The only noise I can hear, and hopefully you can pick this up, is just this little brush, this little cleaner brush, brushing the bottom wheel there to try and help uh, the, the debris, the, the wood waste, uh, you know, stop it from building up on the wheel. What I'll do now, now I've taken the time, as usual, when you put the table on, get the blade tensioned and tracked correctly. My next job is to make sure that we are square table to blade. Your machine has a tilt table. So we can undo the locking lever at the back, tilt the table to do angle cuts. Great feature. But when we put it back down, we want it to come to a positive stop. Well, that's really easily done. This stop knob, this stop bolt rather, that's on the, you know, bolted to the body, can be adjusted up and down to help this table come to a positive stop. How can the table become square to the blade? Very simple thing, and kind of thing you only have to do once. Set and forget. Once I'm at this stage, I'll look at this area. Now this area are the guides, the all important blade guides. Pretty much, no matter what size of machine I'm working on, I will set the blade guides exactly the same. I will drop the blade guide assembly down, about halfway down its travel. I will lock it off at the back. Now this is a very simple little thing. Look, up, down rather, and up. Down, up, down, locked. Nice and gently. Again, not a white knuckle job. We've got the rear thrust roller, which needs to be just a millimetre away from the blade. We've got the two side guides. Now these these kind of brass pieces here, are your side guides. They're brass for a reason. If they do come into contact with the blade, which they shouldn't do, you're not going to damage the blade. These need to be just behind the teeth. Now you've got the ability to adjust the, um, move the complete assembly. This is all an Allen key job, the Allen key supplied as standard. And we can move this entire assembly backwards and forwards to get it exactly where we want it. So I'll, I'll get this in position and show you where it needs to be. Just locked nicely there, okay. No. The side guides want to be just away from the blade and slightly back from the tooth cut line. Slightly back from the gullet, in fact, which is the lower point of the tooth. So on a machine like this, what I tend to do for ease, because you want these 
just away from the blade, it's difficult to tell how close they are. So what I tend to do is sandwich the blade and then just give that blade a little kick one way, pushing that guide out of the way and lock it up, lock it up gently and then move the blade ever so subtly the other way, pushing this guide just, just away from the blade, lock it up gently. And as said, the rear thrust guide, this one, push it till it just kisses the blade, give that blade a little kick back and we're looking for a millimetre gap from the back of the blade to the face of the bearing. Let me see, that looks about right. And there we go. Guides are set, it's an easy job. However, don't forget you've got a set of guides underneath the blade as well, so it's guided above and below the cut to help keep that blade where you want it to stay. So it's worth just paying a bit of attention to the bottom guys and it's exactly the same setup. Really easy. So we've got two side guides, nudge the blade, move the guide, lock it off. Nudge the blade, move the guide, lock it off. The rear thrust roller, that's at the back of the of the blade this one is accessed by tilting the table and then an allen key in there and i can i'm going to get underneath i can see through the the hole in the table the table insert where we're at and there we are that millimeter gap back of the blade to the face of the bearer that is done tension tracking Side guides, rear thrust guides, both top and bottom. We are square. Lock this off. Now at this point, we can drop the table insert in. We can put the fence rail back on, or on, if you've not put it on yet. Four bolts, nice simple little job. Okay, 13 millimeter spanner. One. Two, three, four. We're ready to get cutting. So, all important on any woodworking machine. The PPE, the safety, all that sort of stuff. But extraction. Now, what kind of extraction? I can't afford it, I can't fit it in the workshop. A small machine like this is fine running on a small vacuum, a little shop vac, wow, a Henry Hoover if you must. Um, it, preventative maintenance, it really does prevent the sawdust from building up inside, getting into these electrics, getting onto the bottom wheel, and prevents it being picked up and thrown into these mechanisms here. This doesn't mean the lever have to clean the machine. What I tend to do is, along with my vacuum cleaner, I'll give these areas a good clean with a brush whilst vacuuming. All important on this one as well is to clean the rack. I've got a rack and pinion here, there's, there's teeth in there. If you get build up of dust in there through poor extraction or lack of cleaning, that's important that we keep this clean just so that stays smooth in operation up and down. And I'll tell you why you need to move that up and down in a moment. There's not a great deal of maintenance to do on a bandsaw like this, providing you keep it clean. Best way to keep it clean is through extraction. Now we are blessed here in the Skill Centre Agreed. We've got all sorts of shapes and sizes of extractor. Big ones, little ones, small ones, powerful ones, not so powerful ones. I've got this hooked up to, uh, albeit a festool, I agree, but it's still a vacuum cleaner type extractor. The port that's on the back of the machine just here, it's hoover pipe size. That's going to clear the waste really well. And if you've got one with an auto switch, well, you can plug your bandsaw into there. As soon as you trigger your bandsaw, it comes on and you haven't got to forget to remember or remember to forget. Whichever. So, I think we should do some cutting. Now, it's a benchtop machine. If you're doing heavy cuts or repeat cuts, I think it's not a bad idea to clamp the machine to the bench. I'm not going to do it right now. 
Um, there is not a great deal of vibration on this machine, but actually when we're talking vibration, one thing that does cause a lot of vibration, again we're back to poor extraction and not clearing waste, is build up of waste on this bottom wheel. It does happen even with uh, a good extraction. So a good thing is get yourself an old blunt Stanley blade, don't go too sharp, and literally just rotate that wheel, scraping off a lot of the crud that's built up on that wheel. Mostly on the bottom, there will be a little bit on the top as well. Ever so gently, getting rid of some waste. All right, and that will keep that blade running smoother. Less vibration, less noise, better cuts. You could, in fact, if you have a bench similar to this with a big vise, make a wooden platform, screw a block underneath that wooden platform and drop it and clamp it in the vise. Quick on and off the bench. That's a nice, easy thing. We do that here in the skill center with a few machines. A nice test cut to start with. I'm going to do a curvy cut. Then I'm going to put the fence on and do a test cut. What I'd urge you to do is start with thin, skinny material. Maybe your first bandsaw, you're just getting used to it. Don't overload yourself. Overload the machine. Chop, start thin. This is a bit of a eight mil ply, nine mil ply. All right, so. Now the machine is running so smoothly. Let's do a cut. This is a really good test, just to get you used to your machine, it's just such a random curve. There's no slowing down, no stalling, no struggling on this machine. Wow, that is beautiful. Alright. No particular shape, but it's in relatively thin material. Okay. Let's have a look at the, the waste that's collected inside the machine. So it comes to a stop, Craig, there we go. Right, completely clear and clean. Now, let's just change it up slightly. I'll do this cut. It's gonna be a straight cut. So we add in the fence. The fence is just a straight guide. Lovely, this one clamps on the back of the table as well as the front. Drops in, locks off, and if at all you feel that it's not running parallel to the to the blade we can undo do these two bolts and just move it left or right and a few test cuts is always nice so I'm up in the ante a little bit still plywood some expensive birch face ply this is 15 millimeter stuff I'm gonna cut a thin strip off the off the off the side there so about an inch strip now the all important blade guides don't want to be all the way up there. A lot of blade exposed, safety, but the guides are not controlling, supporting the blade in the all important action area. We're going to drop that down, I don't know, about a centimeter, three eighths of an inch above the workpiece. Now, no extraction this time. Quiet, that machine's running. Slow and steady. Keeping fingers well away now. I don't know if you can pick this up. All this dust on here. Straight away because it's picking the dust up, flicking it around the workshop in effect. This machine's running quite fast like a lot of bandsaws do. Dust on the table, dust coming out here. I can taste the dust, so I should be wearing a dust mask. Push stick supply. Nice little hooky hop on the back here. You can keep it in. Keep it safe, you know where it's at. Slow, steady, when we're coming out of a cut, slow down a little bit. Let's turn them off. Okay, can you see this? How clean and straight that cut is. The all important telltale, is it regular? Have we got the same dimension there? As we have there it certainly looks i've not got to measure down but it looks like it's cutting beautifully so well just out of interest 
Let's open it up and have a look, see what dust we've got. Right, now that was one cut. How much dust is built up inside already? Okay, the all important dust extraction. So let's just do a slightly bigger cut, okay? We'll take this, we'll do a similar sort of inch strip. Bear in mind, I'm not going to get under the guides now, so I'm going to lift this up about a centimetre above. I'm going to switch back to my original setup where I'm using my dust extractor because I like my lungs. I need them. Alright, machine on. Push stick out already. Much thicker material, beautifully clean, straight, square cut. There we are square. Because we've taken the time to square blade to table, I know that this material is going to be cut square. And because we've got the, the high quality 6 TPI blade, finish is pretty good. Not a lot of cleanup for you guys to do after. So. That's just about all we've got time for. Really hope you found this useful. The introduction to your craft AC1400B bandsaw. If you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Take care, bye bye.